Hi everyone, welcome to Type Talks. Today we're here with Dario Nardi and we're gonna discuss the four subtypes of the ENTP personality type. And so we'll begin with the dominant subtype. This subtype is more driven and confident than others of this personality type. So, you know, the ENTP is an uh, interesting type. There's a number of ways to, to approach it. Uh, Linda Behrens talks about its interaction style being more informing and indirect. Um, but sometimes ENTPs can actually be incredibly direct. Um, and I think it's some of that is their, uh, you know, natural bluntness of the thinking function coming out. Uh, and then when they have this confidence, especially the dominant subtype, then they really can come across as uh, much more what we might think at first as an ENTJ, but when we scrutinize their lives and how they do things, it's like, oh no, it really is still very much this um, uh, fascination with uh, lifelong learning. They simply want to be the captain of the ship or one of the captains, uh, as often with ENTPs as the case may be. So I call them an independent consultant, and this doesn't mean that they're always independent in the sense of like a job role, although they could be that. They're very much the ENTP who's just like, oh yeah, here's some like group of CEOs over here. Let me go and talk to them. Um, they're the kind of ENTP that frequently is the one sitting, I, I mean, we're talking about like middle age or, or above. Uh, you know, students, it's a little bit different. Um, the ones that are sitting on multiple boards and, uh, you know, giving insights and ideas and direction and strategizing. And they're really, really good with corporate strategy um, and just for any kind of organization. If they do work independently, um, they're the kind of person that you wanna send in, send in who really has a lot of confidence, is not intimidated about sharing ideas and most of the time can be pretty diplomatic. Um, like all ENTPs, they do have that desire to press the eject button every so often. Um, you know, when when they sort of get, uh, I'm going to say, like a little bit irritated with folks who are disrespectful or something like that. But for the most part, they really are the ones that shine very naturally interfacing with the business world. Um, and I did find that many times they, they still have this eclectic background uh, that could come from anywhere. So it doesn't mean that they start up like, oh, yes, I'm going to be a leader from the beginning. That's not how it is. They they could be um, even, say, like a, a psychologist, uh, military, you know, one military background. Um, and But they're just very comfortable with the, the quick acting extroverted responses, the sort of like what looks like extroverted thinking activities. And, and they do because extroverted thinking is sixth function for them. And Anybody who knows my work knows that the data supports like six function as a thing and it's important, um, not when people are teenagers, but but later on. Um, so they they have this front of the, the brain uh, bias in terms of brain wiring um, and they're keen and they're insightful, they're sophisticated. Um, they tend to be cheerful, but they're also serious when they get down to business. And I, I think that's true of all ENTPs, but this one, this ENTP is definitely one that has his or her life together. They may not feel that way, but from the outside, it certainly looks that way. Um, and they're usually taking some strategic sort of risks, but um, again, they're very strategic. And so they're, they're, there's not like this aura of chaos that surrounds some of the other versions. Um, and so they have this independent freelancer style and well in the organization, which is why I said like a group of leaders is something they're comfortable with. Whereas ENTJ is more like I'm the leader or, oh, this other person is the leader. I'm going to play my role. Um, and finally, I would just go back to the, both to the hormonal element and Helen, and Helen Fisher's work, um, which is the testosterone like feel. And then they have this extroverted intuiting that's very out there and sort of marketer oriented. They're the ones that can give up and stand up and give an, you know, like uh, inspiring speech or talk. Um, 
And then they have this introverted thinking that's like, these, this is the way to do things. But because it's ENTP, it's usually not like one simple way of doing things. They really have still this toolbox and they access that toolbox and they're just really clear, like in this situation, this is the model that we need to apply. And that's where that confidence and, and assertiveness comes in. Yeah, and Dario calls them the independent consultant, and they are wired most densely at the front of their brain, mm -hmm. and they use the connections there most frequently. And Dario also mentions that our sixth function is very strong too for some people. And one of the findings that shows this is his keys to cognition test and the scores that people get there. And I believe you're writing a paper with Mina Bariani on the on the results? Yeah, yeah. So we we have, uh, I mean, there's more than 130,000 entries, but, you know, sort of narrowing down to quality data from that assessment over the years. Um, lots of ENTPs, actually lots of every single type. It's been a popular uh, website over the years. And I want to mention, it's not even just my data. It's also Mark Majors and his Majors PTI. And Mark Majors was a statistician for making MBTI form M. Uh, which was in the late 90s. Um, he was actually sort of dissatisfied with the way the Myers-Briggs company went. I think he said that, and he started his own company and created the Majors PTI. And he found the exact same thing that I did, even though his is structured very, very differently, uh, like not just either or, but like clouds of options that you can select from and so on. Um, so I do believe everybody has an opportunity to to say yes to their sixth function and, and incorporate it in their lives. Uh, for INFJ, just to go on a, a slight detour, it's, um, it's going to be saying yes to what do I want? Like, let me think about that and, and getting in touch with what I want and, and making sure there's like this like uh, emotional and identity self-preservation that's happening. That's a counterpoint to accommodating others. And so for ENTP, it's extroverted thinking. And so the ENTP is the one that, I mean, I think all adults, regardless of subtype, can develop it. Uh, for me, it was like mid-20s. And I really hated introverted thinking before. And it's not always my favorite function. Um, but for this ENTP, it's about bringing in uh, the third function, extroverted feeling, in a way that's diplomatic in business and the values around business and successful businesses and successful consultancy, because that's how they see it. I'm not, they're not running the business, they're consulting with the business. Uh, and that, that's where I think that informing element comes in, that there's more of like, yeah, we're doing stuff together and, and I'm consulting. And, you know, and if you want, I'm going to ask you some questions too. Uh, and and allow you to be a consultant. I mean, and then the extroverted thinking is very much like a business strategy and business methods and return on investment and all of those things that are associated with a very like the, the managerial side of, of extroverted thinking. Makes sense, makes sense. And so how would you tell a party dominant ENTP from an ENTJ in your opinion? Mm, that's a really good question. In my personal ex anecdotal experience, um, having spent a bit of time in a workplace and also having a really good colleague for over 10 years now who uh, has, bo both of them brain imaging revealed they were dominant uh, subtype and, and identified as ENTP um, and, and both no type. Um, I, I would say that the first, it's, it's interesting because the one I was with in the workplace was always torn between ENTP and ENFP. Not because he saw ENFP as a whole pattern that fit him, but he's like, oh, but I've developed a lot of feeling aspects. Feeling for ENTP is different than what the ENFP does. ENFP has a magical ability with narrative um, and understanding people's stories that the ENTP is like, oh, I see this person is telling me a story, but it's a more cognitive approach. Uh, for the other ENTP, and by the way, I think the first one could have easily from other people would think, oh, he's an ENTJ. And at first I thought he was an ENTJ, just like superficially in like the first interaction or two. Uh, and then, you know, getting his personal perspective and the people who work with him and just seeing where also he made mistakes 
were not mistakes that um, either an ENTJ, they were basically like introverted sensing, inferior sensing mistakes that, that, uh, that that an ENTJ I don't think would make those same I don't know it's called them mistakes but missteps a little bit which everybody does in their fourth function and and below um, and then the other one I mean she works as an independent consultant and at first I thought oh surely like she's such a bon vivant like traveling and like going around and doing this and that and has so many different interests and uh, I was a little bit surprised at first and then I thought no because she's the person that the the consulting center will call in to deal with the highest level and most difficult executives because there's just zero level of intimidation there and she's very much has that confidence both in stepping into the situation and seeing all of like all of the interactions noticing where the system is live in the moment and then drawing upon the mental models that are applicable, the mental models, not just as answers, but mental models to facilitate. And an ENTJ will not be using the mental models to facilitate live extemporaneously. You know, like what is the thing to say to this person to calm them down and bring them on the side of these other people over here or something like that. Yeah, that does bring clarity that the ENTP their managerial process or approach to being dominant is different than how an ENTJ would approach being dominant or how an ENTJ would approach a situation. Yeah. And, uh, and so I'm curious, what subtype is Ray Dalio? So I've talked to, to Ray on the phone. I mean, this was many years ago, like 10 years ago. Um, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure he's an NT. Uh, he was quite uh, friendly but confident and assertive, like he had already decided the parameters of what we were going to do together, and we did um, with Bridgewater Associates. Um, and that was, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I would say surely even beyond being an extrovert, even if he was an extrovert, he would be dominant subtype in NT. Um, yeah. yeah. And he identifies as an ENTP, so I was wondering if he was a dominant ENTP. Oh, sure, then that would make sense. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. Because Bridgewater has a reputation for being open-minded but cutthroat. So I was like, it's very dominant subtype ENTP culture. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I would say another thing between ENTJ and ENTP, especially in the dominant one, is that the ENTP is much more focused on and this is one of the themes we'll get to at the end is the lifelong learning where the ENTJ is like, oh, let me talk to some people or do like an internet search. And the ENTP it thinks like, no, let me do like multiple workshops and like really get into this and explore it and experience it. And that dominant perceiving function, just in that very general way, dominant perceiving function says, um, let's let's really embrace the learning because their introverted thinking is not satisfied with a quick internet search or the one size fits all. That said, you know, Ray has a regular newsletter, uh, which I do read, um, and he has his mental models. The mental models are probably, they're, they're at that line between simple and complex. Like they're complex enough to answer people's questions and deal with complexity. And yet simple enough that I think a lot of people can read it and digest it. Um, and ENTPs do have a secret superpower of uh, not, not always developed, but they can to communicate clearly to most people. And that's a, whereas if somebody's wondering ENTP or INTP, and again, this is just a little bit ENTP in general, the ENTP is going to be better at, well, they're going to talk a lot more. Um, but, uh, and more enthusiastically, but they do have that, um, ability to take something complex and bring it within, just within the bounds of the, the average educated person to really be like, oh, that's really cool. That is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> and that moves us to the creative subtype. Dario calls this the inventive promoter and the creative subtype has a starburst pattern in their brain. So can you tell me more about this? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, I, I know a couple of ENTPs. I mean, not, not like close friends, but fairly well who have this pattern too. Um, and uh, wow, just the, the, 
number of exciting, interesting, and risky, ambitious projects that are all sort of, it's not like, oh, I'm going to build one business and just do that for several years or whatever. I mean, no ENTP is going to be like, I'm going to do one business forever um, unless they're normalizing. Um, but they really have this like playing with data and ideas and sharing those and talking about them and not necessarily taking action on those and not necessarily trying to fit it into a practical like goal or context that their, their extroverted feeling is focused a lot on even more than the dominant one on interacting with people, a lot of people warming people up, bringing people over to their side. So in sort of Linda Barron's language, they're the ones that are the most to get things going. Let's get this entrepreneurial idea going. Let's get this creative idea going. These are the ENTPs that will have the most difficulty in college, say, picking a major. Um, they can very much move between like very different professions or uh, entrepreneurial projects that address different professions, like being in the fashion industry for a couple of years and then being like, oh, yeah, you know, fashion is sort of like maxed out where it's going at the moment. I'm not going to make more money here. Because remember, the type is always extroverted NT. They're going to be strategic. Uh, let me shift to something else like music. And then after music, be like, oh, technology is where it's at. So I'm going to go into technology. And, and um, when they don't have their life together, uh, then it can really look like uh, a mess of um, like jury rigged solutions to, to life's sensing problems when they do have their act together, um, it really is quite fluid and fun loving, um, especially in a social sense, not like doing physical activities or something like ENTJ would do, but a lot of social kinds of things. And there's always a mix that's there. Like, yeah, you know, it's, with music, they feel like, oh, yeah, I mean, they need to have some kind of connection to music. Maybe they play a musical instrument. They're going to bring in business elements. They're going to bring in some psychology and thinking about the people around them. Um, they're always thinking about, like, maybe even some legal aspects to it. Um, having this, like, juggling different things. And what differentiates them from the other four is this willingness to do stuff that's sort of dicey, especially with large sums of money. Um, and, and just being like, I'm going to shoot for that difficult goal. Like, the, you know, literal, like with not a literal basketball, but whatever it is. And like, make that, try and make that happen. And if it doesn't happen, like, that's okay. Like, then, then they move on to something else. Um, this is one that probably has to be the most mindful about managing their energy. And, you know, there's, th this is another thing, which I don't talk about so much in the book with the subtypes, but. With every person, there's just like a baseline amount of brain activity. In other words, like how active is your brain? Um, and like the extroverted version of introverts tend to have very active brains, just like high amplitude, high frequency stuff that's going on in the brain all the time. These ENTPs um, really easily find themselves like physically overextended. And being like, oh, I need to go back and incorporate like healthy living and healthy eating and um, exercise and then doing that for a while and then getting caught up in some other projects again and sort of neglecting those um, and finding ways. And, and one of them gave a very nice solution when I asked him because he was already in his around 40 or so. And I said, well, what do you do? Because I saw his brain activity was pretty high, but it wasn't maxed out. Uh, as some like really young ENTPs can. Um, and, you know, where they rely upon sugar and coffee and all of these things to to keep going in sort of like a, you would think they would be strategic about it, but they're they're not. Um, it's It's very short term. And he's like, well, I learned to be more selective, like to have higher standards. So I think that with every subtype, there are some like solutions to common problems. And I think like healthy living and higher standards are the solution for the creative ENTP, which is sort of the stereotypical ENTP. Yeah, I think ENFPs and ENTPs are the most likely to self-diagnose themselves as creative because they relate to the 
ADHD ish aspect to it, but mm -hmm. you have to be like ENTP on steroids or ENFP on steroids to be the creative version. Cause they, they're, they're usually like amplified version of this type. <laughs> yeah, I know. And that that's absolutely the case. Like I, I think in just in general, when people look at them, regardless of type, I mean, especially, but especially for intuiting types it's like, well, I'm creative. I want to be the creative subtype. And it's exactly, as you said, that this is like an amplified version of it. Um, and, and has a little bit of like wild and danger promoting. And it goes back to Helen Fisher's work on dopamine. Um, and they're seeking like the dopamine hits that come with ideas and with socializing. Socializing doesn't mean intimacy here with all the creative subtypes. It's really just about interacting with people is part of exploring the world. So they yeah. look more social because of that. It's not necessarily, they don't, they may even have a more difficult time with relationships like longer term ones, because there is so much turmoil in their lives. Um, it, it, for some people, for some partners, it's just like, oh, this is like too much. Um, and uh, where I think they can balance it out is with the extroverted, besides the things I mentioned, also some extroverted feeling of like putting themselves in the shoes of a partner, whether that's like romantic partner or children or business partner, family members, and and then trying to like calibrate a little bit down to that. Yeah, makes sense. Have you watched the YouTube channel Game Theory with Matt Pat? Mm, no, I don't think so. No. Well, never mind. I was going to ask you what subtype you thought he was because he's an uh, ENTP. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I I do know one in particular. I, I mean, I could go on with even more stories. There are some interesting stories, and and, and I as I run through more. Uh, I'm just thinking like they really do need to take care about their uh, recognizing that there will be consequences for some of the risky ventures. And, and some of those are genuine sensing consequences. Um, they also tend to have like, they're not as serious as the dominant or normalizing version. Well, the normalizing one can, can also have like a sense of humor. that's a little bit more downplayed, but the, this ENTP creative one tends to have like a, sort of fun loving and, and of course, cheesy, it's ENTP, uh, sense of humor. Um, and that's also something that makes it more, uh, like the joie de vie of the moment. Beautiful. I'm also noticing that when you have a subtype that matches your interaction style, so creative is usually associated with get things going, then you have like an ENTP that you could sometimes even confuse for an ESTP, but like you're not, you're, you're like, no, they're definitely ENTP. But like, it's almost like the INTJ who is normalizing and doubling on chart the course is like, they're an INTJ, but sometimes you're like, they have, they have ISTJ qualities to them too, but mm -hmm. they're, they're definitely INTJ. So it, it almost seems like they, they go through that, they go through that first and eighth function confusion. Like you could look at them and not sure. Yeah. yeah, 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 no, yeah, yeah, and that's uh, that's a good point. I hadn't quite thought of that, but yes, of the four, this is the version that was most likely. And we might think, well, it's like very different dominant function, but still, those are dominant perceiving functions, and they are the ones that could look most like they're they're like an ESTP that does not take physical risks, uh, and then when you start to talk to them, you realize they have all this like idea strategy stuff going on in their head. Um, I do know another one who is like, uh, I don't think he's on YouTube and this was before TikTok, but, um, or was it? No, I, no, he was at TikTok at the beginning. Yeah. He, the, this kind of ENTP is great at noticing like what's about to burst out onto the scene and his skits that he did. I'm like, oh my God, how do you come up with these skits? Like they're so good and they're so funny and, and, and yet so like pack so much in such a brief period of time. I'm just like, you are like way too much to handle. And yet the creative output is just genius. Mm, well put, Dario. And then there's the normalizing subtype. This is known as the technical manager. Mm -hmm. And this type is correlated with the hormone serotonin in mm -hmm. Helen Fisher's work. So could you explain a little bit? Yeah, so they're, they're a version that is, um, I, I mean, I know one in particular very well that blends in quite well socially. They have the, the best developed social skills. Their extroverted feeling is 
much more tuned into like what is the norm and how do we get along with people in terms of like societal and social expectations. Um, they do have sort of, it's not that they have a chart the course feel to them, but they know how to fit in the chart the course system. And, and they're not the ones that uh, are, are going to be like going up and talk to the CEO. I mean, they'll, they might do that, but that's not their, their, their standard operating procedure, so to speak. Um, they're the ones that are most comfortable with detail, and they usually have some kind of system to handle the detail. Let's just be clear about that. It's not like they love details or something, no. Um, and they're the ones that, again, tend to have like a system that keeps them organized. And so their introverted thinking is more about like, what are the optimal ways for me to get things done in this system? And so they very much can be this technical manager. And I even remember meeting one who ran a, like a very large storage complex. Um, and I, I don't think she knew type or knew that she was an ENTP, but I had enough time to interact with her. And at first I was quite confused. I'm like, oh, she doesn't really, like, what is her type? And then I'm like, oh, okay. And it was because of the little like humorous quips that were delivered in like a soft, friendly, but still sort of cynical way about like understanding like, oh yeah, this system is so dumb here, but let, like, let's get through it together. Like, I'll take care of you. Um, and they, they often do have um, the, the capacity more than the other three to follow through on the technical stuff, like a degree in biochemistry and become a medical doctor or get through that uh, engineering school and do like systems operations. Um, their interest might be a little bit more abstract too, like linguistics, and then like add in some computational element to it. Um, they're just very good at like setting up a strategy, not even a strategy, but a system of strategies uh, and staying with that, uh, like finding what really works. And even though they look like that they're operating at a desk job uh, and maybe managing a few people and whatnot, that a lot of it is about like, let's let's get things done and make the most of what we're doing and enjoy it. Because if they're not enjoying it, like if there isn't something to add to it that brings some levity to the day, then it's like, why are we doing this? Uh, I do know one here um, who works as a, uh, like a counter hacking, you know, so that it's essentially like managing the company's, well, actually working at a company that manages other company systems to make sure that they resist hackers and deal with, you know, all of that kind of security issues. And hacking is a profession that keeps <laughs> profession um, that that keeps getting more complex. You know, it's like he, he's acting as an antibody in a way. And so that's really fun because there's always something to keep learning. And probably many hackers themselves are ENTPs uh, just because they like to break things and see how it is. And just so those hackers know that there are other ENTPs fighting against them. Um, and who are the ones who are going to be like, yeah, you think that's a backdoor. I'm actually going to set up a trap for you to make you think that this is a backdoor. And then we're going to make sure you, to use some colorful language, that your ass gets bitten when you think that you're getting into our system. Um, so I, I think this is where when you sort of dive into it, you realize like, oh, like they're definitely bringing a level of, and this is what I meant by ENTP fun is like, let's set the trap or something like that. Um, it, it has to be like figuring things out and figuring out what other people are going to figure out. Um, my aunt, who has uh, been a travel agent for many, many years, of course, she takes advantage of all of the, you know, the bonuses, the perks, like traveling and so on, just enjoys travel. A lot of ENTPs enjoy travel, um, like meeting people in new cultures and so on. And she's so good at just like managing like really large and complex itineraries. People in the office are like, oh, like this group <laughs> has come to us. Like we're sending them to, to her um, because she's the one who knows how to handle them. And for her, it's not that, that complex. It's just routine. And then the actual complex is even more than that. Um, probably my accountant is here too. I, I mean, I've talked with her enough. I'm like, 
<laughs> Russian ENTP, there's a combination. Um, it's so good at staying within all of the rules and yet maximizing the loopholes. And for any people who play games like role-playing games or video games or whatever, like finding the cheat codes in the system, not because they want to cheat, because it's not like the ENTJ's drive to just be like, oh, I'm the strongest, I'm the best. Um, it really is like the joy of like figuring that out and, and doing that problem solving. I think this is also the one that is the most mindful of their physical needs, of uh, their family needs, knowing, um, you know, like making sure like weekends are weekends, uh, that family trips are for family, not just for themselves. Um, and, and yeah, they can play devil's advocate and have the devilish humor and so on, but that's, it's much more tempered than, than the other three. Yeah. Very cool. And so Antonia from Personality Hackers and Normalizing ENTP with Harmonizing Secondary, correct? They, yes, that, that is. And they, they have a video on YouTube that like shows them going through the process and getting their results. I think a lot of people would pinpoint her as being harmonizing. And in many cases, like when she does coaching, probably needs to do that. But in terms of the brain imaging, it's as you said. And, and I think it's useful for everybody to remember that first of all, probably the best way to think of the subtypes is just to rank them rather than to say, because they're not meant to be smaller boxes. They're just like ways we've developed. Um, and, and then to keep in mind, like how, wh what is their scope of work? Like, are they dealing with many people in a standardized way? So that would be normalizing. Are they dealing with a small number of people in a very intimate way, which would be harmonizing? Um, are they dealing with people in a very broad sort of stimulating way that is different every time? That would be creative. And then the dominant one is really about working with and, uh, you know, utilizing people power in, in order to get the whole like organization to succeed, the system to succeed, whatever it is. Um, but yeah, that's, that's Antonia. Yeah. So it's cool how your work style will really reflect, really reflect your subtype or like the kinds of work situations you're put in. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And so then that brings us to the harmonizing subtype. Mm -hmm. Dario calls this the strategic humanist. And so could you go into this? Sure. Yeah. So the, the element the, the, some of the elements there are um, being more empathic and reflective and oriented toward nuance. Um, usually they're dealing with people in a close relational way. So they're often in a relational role, like a psychologist, for example. Um, and they, they have both a sort of holistic or yin version of each function, preferred function. So they're going to come with uh, extroverted intuiting that is not very showmanship and marketing oriented, but is much more like we talked about with the ENFP quite a bit. Um, this observer who notices what's going on. Now, ENFP in observer mode is like super ENFP skills. Like they just even see, they pass a person notice them in the corner of their eye and they're like, oh, that's their story. ENTP needs more to work off of than that um, because ENTP has that introverted thinking that actually needs to like plug in numbers into the equations uh, in order to figure out like, okay, what is the best strategy in this situation for this person? Um, they're really good in like supportive and facilitative roles. Uh, so they could be like an advisor, a diplomat, um, somebody where, gosh, we haven't, we need an ENT. Well, I, I'm not saying you should do business this way, but imagine what if we need an ENTP, but we need them to be in a listening role. The, like only, only the harmonizing subtype is going to work for that. Um, needing somebody that listens and is not wedded to particular strategies or models, although they have a lot of them, they sort of hold all of those lightly. And, and their extroverted feeling is usually going to be also more, their sort of function more like yin holistic, acting as like a host or hostess in a way. And you come into my space and I'm going to help you out. Um, they will want to give 
the person models or strategies for the person to do on their own because they're still NT types and they sort of want to see other people engaged in lifelong learning too. So that could be noticing, for example, like I, I think NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, is a really great example where ENTPs, uh, in fact, all of the thinking perceiving types can do really well um, because they'll notice all of the um, what are called internal strategies that people have. So for example, noticing that a person uses should or must a lot and then keying that into like, oh, that indicates that they have like this kind of defense that we we need to sort of work past and let's find a way to to like in the moment let's work together in a way to find it out and they're the most likely to be the ones that are like let's oh, all the creative can be like this too but they're not high energy about it they're more like low energy a little bit lower pace let's explore together and they really want the other person to be open to as much as possible like to play game to from from an sp's point of view like let's play tennis um but the, in this case here it's usually going to be about learning and growth and that kind of thing um and helping the person like learn the strategies that they need to learn or unlearn strategies you know i mean this is this is a lifelong skill that's needed called unlearning and de-identification and and where, whereas the society of course pushes people in the opposite direction at least western society is like i'm a this and i'm a that and i have this skill on my resume and that skill and this is the way i'm going to do things and um yeah probably the this is a bit far away from what would be the corporate or business environment although they're still they still have this i would call it a pragmatic wisdom like it, and it really it's it's about um, observing what's going on in a very sophisticated way, and then having their toolbox sort of like heads up display or console right in front of them to like help shift the situation. Milton Erickson, who I believe was an ENTP, uh, considered one of the best therapists ever. Um, tasked with, I mean, or self-tasked. I mean, he observed that many times, in very brief, I'll say many times, uh, families would come in and they would bring in a teenage child who they believed that the teenage child was the one with the problem. And they're like, you know, Dr. Erickson, can you help him or her? And very quickly, uh, Milton Erickson was like, well, I think that, well, it's a whole family system, but the parents are actually the problem. So how can I deliver therapy to the parents without thinking that they're in therapy? And he was very, very good at doing that and discovered ways to do that very much on the fly. And in this case, actually adopting some like NF story techniques, um, but in a very strategic way and, and a way that was really quite like woven in the moment creatively and also using the introverted sensing like body of stories that are there. So I think of the four you know, they, they're going to express their inferior function in different ways. And for normalizing, it's about like getting along in the system. And for harmonizing, it's about being in touch with like, what is my giant database? And eventually, what is other people's database of sensing impressions? You know, because the whole, the whole definition of introverted sensing is not like body awareness or something or following the rules is about like, Oh, like here's a package and it's nuts. And some of the extroverted sensing will be like, oh, I feel like in a nutty mood right now. Or um, this packaging looks fun. Or uh, I need like a quick source of protein, something like that. You know, that's a little bit more pragmatic. Introverted sensing is like, it can be negative. Like, oh, I remember the time I choked on a nut uh, and that was not fun. Um, but there is this like, what, what are all the memories that are evoked and the associations not like new ideas, but like past experiences, the associations that come with this package. Like, oh yeah, they had these so often when I was growing up. And then there's like a nostalgia for the past. And so this, this subtype is the most in touch with that form of introverted sensing and being aware of like when people feel comfortable, when they feel uncomfortable, when they feel safe or unsafe and, and working with that. And that's at a different level than organization, rules, that kind of thing. Fascinating. Um, I'm, I'm just changing my leg again. It's going numb. <laughs>
it's the problems of short people. I'm trying to sit on my legs so I look less. Uh, uh, <laughs> so so and, what I did for my mom, by the way, is I bought her a pad at Walmart that's like this thick to sit on when she's driving. And that like solved all of her discomfort while driving. Oh, that's just, like, literally the like the 20 minute trip to Walmart. And I asked them, like, do you have like a pad for the driver, like the driver's seat of the car? And they're like, oh, of course, like it's an aisle such and such. It's something that, you know, sensing people think of all the time. Um, but intuiting people need like that extra push to remind them that they're like really good sensing solutions to life's problems. That's true. You can't mind over matter everything. Yeah. And so, Dario, I'm curious, what are patterns all ENTPs share regardless of their subtype? Hmm. Um, I would say going back to something I mentioned earlier, there's this inventiveness and lifelong, like a passion for lifelong learning. Like they have a value and a passion around the act of learning itself. Um, I, I think this is true of all NTs to some extent and, and just intuitives to some extent, but there really is this like, oh, I love books. This is a book on a really like awesome topic that's just coming out and they grab the book and they're interested and there, there's also at the same time this like eagerness and maybe not a willing to sit through quietly and read the whole book. So they're going to listen to a podcast or they want to talk to somebody about it. Um, it's really this passion for, for learning. Um, and I, I think also with ENTJ, bringing something to the world that is inventive and also timely. Whereas I think INTJ and INTP are inventive, but a little bit more, people will really appreciate me 40 years from now or whatever, I mean, for INTP, um, or they may not even be thinking about the application, but just wanting to, to explore something longer term. Um, so that exploration of ideas, um, really good at like bringing people together in a way that people want to be together, they're interested, they're excited, uh, getting those people excited about where the project or organization is going, um, building some prototypes to actually make it happen. Um, and, and they're usually prototypes. That doesn't mean it's the final thing, it's finished or whatever. It's like, this, this here's an example of what it is that we can do. Like they're going to whip something together that's an example. Um, ENTJ can also act quickly, but then I, I think ENTP has a little bit more um, yeah, it, it's a little bit more of that prototype element and the willingness to go back and revise. And if there's an impatience, it's simply a desire out of eagerness to see it happen. Whereas ENTJ is like, oh, we have a timetable to work on. And in order to reach market at such and such, like I'm giving this a week as like a hard deadline. ENTP usually is not going to give a hard deadline for anything. Um, uh, I, I mean, they're going to try maybe, I don't know how well it's going to work. Um, I do think that the, the strategies that they came up with, yes, they tend to be, they have to balance a sort of idealism versus pragmatism because they're the NT that can look the most idealistic. Like, oh, imagine what if like everybody could get along better. Imagine a different way to do politics where people are elected differently. Um, and then, you know, gathering sort of, or, or like producing the energy that will attract people. I want to say it that way, producing the energy that attracts people to help like explore that without being completely wedded to it or being like, oh yes, we have this roster of exactly who we need on board. And although eventually they will get to the point when they're more practiced, there's some extroverted thinking will kick in and say like, yeah, let's, let's like look through this short list and fill things in. Um, there really is, I think my biggest learning experience with ENTP is wanting to discover a new outcome together. So if ENTJ is about implementing outcomes, ENTP is about discovering new outcomes together. And, and usually around something that will be interesting and impactful and um, innovative. Uh, they also enjoy like hosting and inviting people to do things and are much more mindful, like noticing, and I'm talking about a little bit more mature ENTPs, 
uh, oh, this person is tired or, you know, what is it that they'd like to have at dinner or whatever it is. Younger ENTPs uh, that may go completely over their head. And so this is a learned skill. I mean, is anything with the third function that will be learned? Um, uh, I, I think that they also can be surprised when it comes to problem solving relationships. Um, and, and this can work very well, which I think is sometimes why they're going to be surprised. So with other folks who have that FETI access to sit down with the person and be like, okay, these are the problems I see going on. Like, let's find a way to work with each other and come up with a solution. Um, like it's really great. Like I've stayed with Joel and Antonia before for several weeks at a time and watching them do like problem solving with their teenage kids or two of them, teenagers. Um, and, and Antonia in particular is just like, let's just sit down and be like frank about it. And like, let's figure it out. And like, let's stay, let's not get like personally sucked into like some kind of emotion or something. I mean, be friendly and warm, but also be solution focused. And, and so I think that there's that capacity to do it. It doesn't always work so well with the TEFI types uh, because we operate on a different axis and are looking for things like authenticity. Um, not, not that it's going to be unauthentic, but just being like, oh, this is so intense. Like I, I can't deal with this at the moment. And then I think something that may come as a surprise for people, especially if we don't know the, the dynamic model of type, the stack, uh, is that introverted sensing that at some level, they really do need to feel safe and stable. Like it isn't just an aspiration. It becomes necessary. There is so much, like with the intuiting and the thinking of being up in the air and not in any place in particular, this capacity to just even walk into a different, like, country and culture and like meet people and get along and talk to them and ask questions and be like that, you know, that that's great in a way to not notice what the ISFJ would be terrified to do. Like, Oh no, what if I accidentally offend them? And shouldn't I learn all of the right ways of interacting? ENTP is like, Oh, most of those, like my enthusiasm can override that or the enthusiasm will develop together can override that. Um, so they have this very much like, disconnected from, uh, I, I think is one ENTP professor I had years ago. Um, he said, the question is not, this was like a philosophy of mind class. The question is not whether we can step into the same river twice. In other words, can we have the same experience again? Really? The question is, can we ever step into the same river once? Like, can, do we actually experience directly anything? Now, for people who have extroverted sensing sort of high up in their stack, they're like, of course we can experience things. But here, the extroverted intuiting with introverted thinking is like really far removed. So even though they feel like extroverts, they're extroverts that are operating on the level that's like not really directly connected to anything in front of them. Um, and, and so there's this undercurrent at the same time that this, there's a lot of uncertainty here and, and just to find grounding, like a sense of like home and place and assuredness, especially in relationships, but also physical stuff that it's like, oh, this grounding, like ironically will allow them to get more things done. And the normalizing version is the most grounded of the four. Um, but they all do need this is the sense of like making sure like, do they feel safe and comfortable? Even if they claim that they don't need it, like don't listen to that. They do. Yeah. And because they want that, they can be selectively anal slobs. So in some areas they completely let loose and in other areas they're like, okay, we got to get this right in this specific area. And so it can be very surprising to people who watch them. Oh, um, yes. I Stories come to mind for sure. And sometimes they have this other SFJ side. I'm like, where did you get like such to be a stickler on like that specific kind of thing? But for them, it's just like, in order to float all this other stuff, we need to do, we need to have some things that are just set. Yeah. And one of the hallmarks of ENTPs is, their contingency plans because they can what if so much they can think about all the other contingency plans 
an, an anecdotal story of an ENTP is they carry around a bunch of things because they never know which one they'll need. So because they don't want to narrow down the possibilities, they just have all the options available to them. Mm, yeah. And that gives them some security. Yeah, I, I do know the ENTP who does martial arts and he actually draws these like tree diagrams of movements and, and then like learns them and practices them and so on. So he's bringing in his introverted sensing with that. Um, and it's so funny to see him then use that same approach of the gaming table to develop like a character and and like the, the, the abilities that you like build onto your character. Um and thinking like, oh, yeah, I have all of like these different contingency plans for different situations that are going to happen. And it was so brilliant that one of them spent like hours developing this character. And it was like what's called PVP or player versus player. And this INTJ, she just came in and she did something that was just not on his list of things that could happen. And then that was like, it was like oh, my God. Um, and she's just like, boop. Um so yeah, I, I think that that's that's also something that people may not appreciate sometimes that that well, it, it's it's not all random actually. That the introverted thinking has thought through a lot of like not just models but like methods or processes or whatever it is to handle whatever comes up as much as they can. Absolutely. And so thank you, Dario, for coming out today. So if you like today's video, feel free to check out Dario's book, Decode Your Personality, Go Beyond Myers-Briggs with the 64 Brain-Based Subtypes. And so thank you. We'll see you all in the next one. Take care. Thank you.